Well, good morning. We come to you from the great beyond. Um, I, I'm not with you this morning uh, in physical person, but um, through the wonders of technology can bring you this message as uh, this morning. Um, who said men can't be in, do two things at once? I'm here speaking to you uh, via a mis video message and uh, I'm off um, assisting with uh, our young youth of, of our community through the footy club in a practice game that's probably started right now. So um, yeah, be, please be praying for them as they, as they go about this. It's an exciting time for the kids uh, as they start their season off uh, in this way. Um, and uh, I took the opportunity this morning to, in, in a message to, to bring you uh, out in the community. Um, uh, gone on location, here I am, and, and you can probably see behind me uh, the footy goals uh, in, a, in a rotunda here at Mattingly Park. And it is, uh, it's, a, it's a cool morning, a crisp morning, but beautiful surrounds. And you can see the, the lovely rose bushes there. Um, back past those goals there is, is the high school where three of my kids go. And just over the other side there is, is our other high school here in Bacchus Marsh, Bacchus Marsh Grammar as well. And, and it's, um, it's important to do this um, because, uh, you know, this is part of the community. This is the this is part of um, what we are connected with as a church in the, in terms of the school and and the sports ground and and the Mattingly Park um, over the back there where we've served the community as well and we talk about this and we've talked about this so many times and it's it's nice to be out out in in a location to be able to bring this message uh, this morning and we're going to focus in on Luke. Uh, chapter chapter 10 um, I, I was having a look through as as I was preparing for this morning um, where we would be right now so we're leading up to Easter uh, and in two weeks time is uh, Palm Sunday as uh, Jesus enters into Jerusalem and we remember those those uh, that the message of that and, and the, uh, the events that happened and transpired around that but if we take ourselves back a couple of weeks uh, into now um, we put ourselves into uh, the end of the conclusion of the ministry of Jesus on, on earth. And there's many things that are happening in and around now. Um, Jesus has performed many, many, many miracles uh, as recorded through Luke and told many parables. Um, just before we, we find ourselves here in chapter 10, we've, we've had Jesus sending out the 12, 12 disciples in pairs. Um, He's also fed the 5,000. Uh, he's revealed himself to Peter as well. Well, Peter's had a confession uh, of, of Christ. And then he's revealed himself to Peter, James, and John through the transfiguration. We move on to, to chapter 10. Jesus has um, expressed who is the greatest in the kingdom, those that believe and do without question, but through faith. And in chapter 10, Jesus sends out the 72. Well, in, my, in my Bible, the NIV it says 72. There's conjecture within scripture, whether it was 70 or 72 from the early um, scriptures, uh, it's recorded as 70. Luke records it as 72. Um, so we're gonna pick it up at 72 uh, in here as well. And throughout this, this chapter, or these verses, we're going to go through to verse 21. And throughout this, we're really going to focus on the importance of, of taking in your surrounds. The importance of doing things together. Of going without knowing. And, and that real thanks, thanks, the prayer of thanksgiving that Jesus um, prays to, to his um, disciples as he is thankful for their, their faith and their faithful obedience to serve. So we're going to do that uh, this morning. Uh, and first I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this surrounds. I thank you for the, the area that we're in. Thank you for this community and our community. I just pray, Father, that you will help us to, to focus in on what it is that you are doing and focus in on the surrounds and not to miss the things that can often be right in front of us. I invite you here this morning 
in spirit and in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to pick it up in, um, in chapter 10. I'm going to read through the whole of the 21 verses and then we're going to go back and have a look at, um, at a few things. Chapter 10, verse 1. Now after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into this harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among the wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking, whatever they, whatever they give to you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and you're welcome, eat what's set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near. When you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks on, your, on our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet, be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. I tell you, it will be more bearable in the day for Sodom than for, the ta for that town. Woe to you, Chorazan. Chorazin, for, woe to you, Beth Bethesda. For it is, if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have been repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will, be, you will, you will go down to the depths. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he, he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to, your, to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to overcome all of them, all of the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm. However, do not rejoice in that, in that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Amen. So, here we have um, quite a, a lengthy period of time here. Um, we read it in, in chapter 10 um, in, its, in these verses and, and sort of think, oh, well, it's, it's, it seems like a quite, our brain sort of computed as, as quite a quick amount of time. But if we see here, we go uh, all the way from verse 1 uh, through to verse 16 is, is the sending out and the, and the, um, and the commissioning of, of the, the 72 to go out and go to these towns because Jesus says go to these towns and if if you're welcome there then stay and eat and drink and, and share the gospel with, with them or share the, the message of, of Christ with them uh, and then in verse 17 it says that the, uh, the 72 returned so they, they, you've got to think that there's quite a lengthy period of time because they've gone out they've done what they've needed to do and now they're coming back and reporting so there is a, a, a good a good amount of, of space it, it could be weeks uh, it could be a couple of months uh, in amongst this, but we do, uh, in some um, records, we see uh, timelines of events at this being uh, this spring um, of, of the season that they were in. And then we head into, into Easter, obviously, in a few weeks' time. So we're probably, probably looking at, at, some, at some period of a, a few weeks or, or maybe a month or so uh, that this, this is all happening. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We, so often we say these, these words um, because the glory and the kingdom message and, and the kingdom revealed in our communities is there. But uh, often we say, well, there's too much to do for too few. We don't have, uh, even have to say that just for 
for, for revealing the kingdom in our communities. We, were, we see it at, uh, in our workplaces, in our schools, in all these things. We sometimes say to ourselves, oh, you know, we'd get, be able to get so much more done if we had more people. And perhaps that's, the, and that's probably definitely the case. It's, it, we would get more done if we had more people. Things would get done a lot quicker. And we'd be able to achieve more. However, potentially, the work that needs to be done, the amount of people required to do it, is already there. So when Jesus talks to the, the 72 here, and mind you, sends him out two by two. Now remember last week we were saying that, uh, that together, are they, uh, looking forward to, not T-O, but T-O-O, and that I'm looking forward to, as well as with others, sends them out two by two. You can think how daunting it would have been for these people. You know, there's only 72 of us, and how many towns are we meant to go and visit? This area is so, so large. Jesus goes, no, well, that's enough. I've sent out the 12 already, and now I'm sending out this group. The harvest is plentiful because of the work that was going to be done. The workers are few, but if we focus on the negative of how few we have, we can often lose sight of the fact that Jesus, that God can produce much harvest with few workers. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, the peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Saying that, go out. If you um, are not received in the way that I want you to be received, well, your peace will return to you and move on. But he does say, Jesus does say, don't move from town to town. Give it time. Let it rest. How often have we, we met somebody? Um, potentially our first impressions aren't. Aren't, um, aren't they great? We try, we try very hard not to, not to, to judge people, um, not judge a book by its cover. Um, but that's our, that's our way of computing as humans. We, we, we do that. Then when we get to know people a little bit more, we see their true selves revealed and, and we can see a gentleness in, in, in many people and a story that, we, that, that gets told by them as well. And we've spoken about this before. Take the time to reveal their story. Jesus says, Woe to Chorazin, Chorazin, woe to you Bethesda, for miracles that were performed there in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon. Jesus is saying here that this really gets down to the heart of, of, of seeing what's right in front of you because all through these, these towns and these cities, um, Capernaum, Jesus set up camp in these places. It was almost like his home base and, and uh, many miracles and many um, sermons or things were preached in these areas and many of the people heard but didn't, didn't listen or listened but didn't hear. They didn't take on or see what was right in front of them. And, and, and Jesus is saying, woe to these people because the, you haven't, you've had the, the time and the access to these things that have been happening, but you haven't taken any notice. They've been right in front of you, but you haven't, haven't seen them and taken notice. He who listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me he reject he who rejects me rejects him who sent me strong words very strong words um, i don't know if you can think of a time where where perhaps you've been rejected perhaps you've been ridiculed for your faith i certainly was as a as a teenager um, many times would come up and, and it would get to a point where, where I didn't want to um, say that on the week, what did I do on the weekend? Oh, well, I went to church because it would come back and, and, um, and, and I'd be ridiculed for it or I'd be teased for it or, um, you know, why don't I go and do this instead of going to church? And, and what is this faith that you have? And, and all these sort of things. And, 
And, and the words here in, in verse 16, they're, they're powerful words of, of protection over us. They're harsh words to those who reject. But they're, they're protection. They're, they're, Jesus is saying, well, that those that reject your words reject mine. And those who reject me reject God. Powerful words. Powerful words for us to, to take hold of and, and say, well, well, you know, God, my salvation in Jesus is much more important than any of these things that are going on because that's eternal salvation. And Jesus is saying, well, that's, that's, that's the case and, and, and you can take heart in, in, these, in these facts. Because Jesus does go on and, and pray these words uh, later on in, in terms of um, these these things that, that we commit to and it's much more important for the, for to know and be saved than any of their actions that go on and the healing that goes on. So here we are with the, the 72 have gone out. They've, they've, they've probably some of them are at a point where they're going, well, I don't know what's in front of me. Um, and I'm being sent to a town and I know what's happening in that town. I know some of these towns that I'm going to have rejected Christ or they've uh, people have passed we've passed through these towns and oh they're not they're not nice places but they're going out without knowing completely what's what's ahead of them we can try to understand this in as adults in the form of um, uh, workplace situations and jobs that we go to uh, we don't know the people or we don't know uh, exactly what we what, what we're getting ourselves into but we've got a little idea because we've done we've it's either something we've studied before or we've been to the interview so we know the company that we're going to work for or the place that we're going to work for and we know uh, a little bit about it uh, and i guess that's where they find themselves as well they, they're going to towns that they know a little bit about and uh and, and they're going in with with some sort of knowledge of the place that they're going to go but if you want to strip it right back to to where some of these disciples some of these people were we're thinking take you back take yourselves back to your first day of school for some that's a while ago and for others it's not that long ago and i can remember uh, vividly my first day of school and uh, and if you can't quite remember things then i can probably confidently say that uh, your first day of school probably involved not necessarily from yourself but from mem from many others a lot of tears uh, they from kids the, the kids are going into a place they've been told about this school that they're going to this place where they're going to learn and they're going to make new friends and all these sort of things they're going into these places but suddenly they're 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 taken to the school and they've got to leave their comfort zone they have got to leave what is usual for them in spending time with their parents during the day and being at home. Um, the comfort of their, their, their normal routine to go into something new. So you can understand why there is upset there. And so for us as parents, when we, when we take our kids into those sort of environments it's up to us to to prepare but it's also up to us to nurture them through and so Jesus is doing that he's comforting those that believe and have faith that this is what you're going to do this is what's going to happen when you are accepted and then this is what you're going to do and this is what's going to happen when you're not and you will do this and rest assured whoever listens to you listens to the words that I've said and whoever doesn't rejects all that's been said and so we say to our kids well this is what's going to happen you're going to go into a classroom you're going to meet your teacher you're going to meet all your new friends and you learn for a little bit and then you're going to have a little bit of time off for for, for a break and a snack and you're going to learn for a little bit more and then you're going to have lunch time and you're going to play with kids and you're going to um, you're going to interact and let's treat 
these other kids the way that you want to be treated. And, and if you don't get treated uh, in the same way in return, well, come find some other friends to be, be a part of. And, or speak to these, these friends or speak to the teacher. So we're teaching our kids all of these things. Now, sometimes it takes a long time. And so in this instance, it's taken all this period of time for them to go out and learn. And so they've learned and they've come back and they've said, I saw Satan, oh, sorry, sorry the, the, the 72 uh, came back and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. So excited. He's so excited. All of what you said was going to happen, happened. And even the demons submitted to your name. Jesus replies, he saw Satan fall. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, the evil that is among us. But don't rejoice in that. Rejoice in your names, in, that, in the fact that your names are written in heaven. You get caught up with, with doing and I, I talk about it a lot. I'm, 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 I'm open with that and, and the things that we, we do. And it's, it, it can be confusing um, a little bit when you read certain aspects of Scripture and, and, you, um, and you look at different things and you say, well, I'm, I'm called to go and do. But then Jesus tells me just to rejoice the fact that I'm, I'm saved. But what we're really called to do, if we focus on the things that we're called to do, we're called to go out into the world and make disciples. That's our core focus. Because more, the more that we do that, the more we expose others to the salvation that is in Christ. And we do this through our words and our actions. So Jesus is saying, the action, they, they, that's great. But celebrate that, because those things are good. But rejoice, be even gladder that your names are written in heaven. Salvation is much more important. And the fact that you've gone out without question, that you've gone out and done, you've gone out and been in amongst the harvest that is plentiful, but the workers are few. We're going to um, look later on in, in the year at, at, um, at the book of Chronicles and what to do when you get tired, because all of this might sound overwhelming, and, and it is, in part, but what to do when you're tired, and, and, and focusing on verses like that, rejoicing, rejoicing that, this, that your name is written in heaven, that salvation is much more important. And then Jesus in verse 21 is a, is a prayer of thanksgiving. At that time, Jesus, full of joy, that the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to your children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Interesting. The ministry of Jesus was, was all about this, was all about um, teaching, teaching, and, and, and learning of and using the example of children those that learned and did without question um, that had a faith served in faithful obedience you know, the scriptures were there for the priests and the kings at the time and they'd been exposed to them for so long, but in actual fact, the, the Pharisees and, and the priests at the time missed what was right in front of them. And that's the message, because then, then Jesus goes on to talk about the Good Samaritan and, and the fact that, you know, regardless of where, where your status is in, in life, this gospel message is for all. This gospel message is to be, to be spread amongst the nations. Jesus says, thank you, Father, for, for revealing it and learning it to those little children, those that, that, 
don't have any preconceived ideas or things that are, that are going on in their life that potentially their pride gets in their way or you know what they think they might they might know we focused on those that that are among us each and every day and for those um, people those towns that Jesus speaks of that, that you know, missed what was right in front of them they, they traveled through these towns and he says woe to you because it was right there in front of you and you didn't take hold of it praise and be thankful for those that did and rejoice that their names written in heaven and, and sometimes we can miss what's right in front of us and this little rotunda that, that I'm sitting that, that sort of overlooks the ground here um, I'd seen it for a, for a long long while but it was only last year that, that um, I was watching my son play, play footy out here on one morning and I walked over and, and Susan was here with another friend of ours as well and, uh, and our daughter Annalise was here and I came across to see what they were doing and bought across the coffee which, um, which I, just mind you I've got as well and I stood here and I, and I, and I looked out and I've gone this is a this is a great view I've never really noticed this was here and it gives us a different perspective and and I encourage everyone to to do that to see the scriptures in a different way as you read through them but see your community in different ways now you may not have you know you may not feel you've had you've got the time to go and do these things but um, just I encourage you in those moments where you get a chance to to maybe walk to a certain place or or sit in a certain area take a good look take a good look at what's right there in front of you because those that, that followed Jesus did that they took the opportunity to have a good look and were blessed in relation to it and I'm going to spin this camera around uh, through the wonders of technology here. I'm going to take you out and show you um, some of these, some of the different things and hopefully you don't get a little bit seasick from this but I'm going to take you out because right behind me here are, you probably already noticed some, some beautiful flowers and we don't just focus on one aspect in the, in the footy ground but if we pan right around and hopefully nobody's walking here and I can't get them on camera but if we pan right around it's a beautiful area Take the opportunity to come. Oh, there's honey, half my face. We take the opportunity to come and and sit. Um, I'm thankful that I get to do it, um, and and really get to do it in a, in, in areas and, and look around and, and see what's what's there in front of us. And as a church, we we do this. See what's there in front of us and see where God is calling us to be and do go out and potentially go into other people's houses or, or places things like the markets where we've served in go out and talk to people it's time to do this it's I feel like we're being called to go and do this and i'm glad to have been able to bought, bring a, a message to you from this location this morning and, and really play, pray that you are blessed this morning as you continue to worship our Lord and Saviour. Amen.